Hello and welcome back to Simple Yet Savvy. I am Vijaya and I make videos on budget makeovers, minimizing and saving time and money. In my last video, I took you through seven reasons why I like to label everything in my kitchen. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through my entire process of labeling while talking a little about how it helps me get so much more done for so little. And if you're still wondering what labeling has got to do with saving time or money, then do watch my video on seven reasons why I label everything in my kitchen and I will leave the link somewhere up here. Let's begin. I'm using a regular A4 size paper in black color to make these labels. And my friend Madhu has cut them in perfect circles for me. So thank you so much Madhu for that. Here I also have these ready-made stickers just in case. And to get that blackboard and chalk kind of look, I also got this pen from Amazon. It's a quick dry permanent marker pen that writes in white and the end result is very much chalk-like. And I'll leave the link for this pen in the description below. I started making one label for each of my kitchen jars. They're writing first because it's much more easier to write this way when compared to writing on a label that's already been pasted on a jar. You can see me writing twice for a bolder effect, but this pen is also available with thicker tips just in case you prefer a thicker effect. To add a little extra to the look, I tried adding a border to one of these labels and I thought it looked very cute. So I did the same for the rest of the labels as well. I really like how these labels look but one of the most important reasons why I label my kitchen jars is to make the kitchen accessible to everyone in the family because things are easy to find so the kitchen no more is just one person's domain. Anyone can cook or put away the groceries. Here I have laid out some of the items that I use on a daily basis in my kitchen and just like all kitchens. I have an assortment of kitchen jars and bottles too. So let's see how label is going to help in creating a uniform look for all of these jars and bottles of different varieties. Like I said, I have been labeling since I can remember. So once the labels start to look dirty or they start to fade, I relabel them. But in today's process, I am going to try a more efficient or long lasting solution and I'll show you how in a bit. But for now, I am just cleaning up the caps, trying to get rid of any of the remaining grease or dust from them before we begin labeling. I keep these items in this drawer. So basically, they are below my eye level. And that is why I will label them all on the top, that is on the caps. But let me also wipe this shelf clean quickly and let it dry and get some air while we finish labeling. To avoid making any mistakes while pasting the labels, I recommend that you simply place the right labels on top of the right jars like this first. This will also tell you if you missed making one of the labels. I also made these kind of wavy labels for caps like this. Now here comes the important part. To stick these labels, I have taken one part water with three parts of Fevicol and mix them all well together. First of all, it just makes the glue easy to spread on the labels. But more importantly, this water and glue solution also works as Mod Podge or a sealant. I am coating the label with the same solution to Mod Podge it or to seal it off. So once it dries up, the label will become resistant to moisture and oil exposure in the kitchen, making the label quite long lasting. Similarly, I am going to label all the rest of the labels as well. wiping off any excess and also pressing down the label firmly with a towel to remove any air bubbles. I'm not coating the rest of the labels right now for this video, but I'm definitely going to do that later. Time now to put the jars back in the drawer.
I also have a hold all kind of a quintessential steel dabba that you can find in every Indian kitchen. I use this one to keep a variety of things that I don't use that frequently in my kitchen. And I think it makes much more sense to group and have all of them in one container rather than multiple jars just to avoid the visual clutter and also to save space. So I relabeled this one too with a list of things that it contains. With that, we're all set. Here's how the labeled jars and containers look now. Remember I said labels will help to create a cohesive or uniform look for jars and bottles of different shapes and colors? Check the difference here. These containers are not see-through from the top, so these labels make it so easy for me to know what's inside without having to open the lid. You'll also be able to spot what you need at a glance when you're cooking or making your list to order groceries. And that's all I had for you today. I hope you liked the video and you're inspired to try out labeling in your own kitchen. If you like the video, hit that like button because that would let me know that I should be making more such videos. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos on frugal living and saving time and money. And I'm also going to leave some more videos up here that I think you might like. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.